OBR of the Philippine Broadcasting Service. 104.3 on FM. Music and talk. Nice and easy. The time is 12 o'clock. Residents of seven Zamboanga city areas are advised to seek safer ground amid continued clashes between the government and the Moro National Liberation Front or MNLF Miswari faction forces. City Mayor Isabel Salazar also said the curfew from 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. will remain in place. She said the imposition of the curfew will continue and schools, both public and private, will likewise remain closed. She said only offices rendering frontline services will operate. Meanwhile, the city government assured residents who wish to provide soldiers food that the soldiers have their own rations, but sharing food with the soldiers is not prohibited. The city government also said there was no information of a power outage for the night. President Benigno Aquino III is now in Zamboanga to personally check the developments there as the standoff between the government forces and the Moro National Liberation Front, or MNLF, reaches its fifth day. Communication Secretary Ramon Carandang confirmed that the chief executive left Manila at 7.30 this morning. Melanie Valdos reports. Carandang said the decision of the president to leave was made last night upon discussion with people in Zamboanga. Yesterday, President Aquino issued an ultimatum to the Nur Miswari-led faction of the Moro National Liberation Front to end the standoff in Zamboanga City as the government is now weighing its option for a possible military action. Melanie Valdos reporting for PBS. A low-pressure area moved closer to Luzon and may make landfall over central Luzon in the afternoon or evening. Pagasa forecaster Hener Kitlong said the low-pressure area is likely to become a cyclone once it exits the Philippine area of responsibility. But if it does so will rather but if it does so while still in the Philippine area of responsibility, it will be codenamed Odette. The Pagasa forecaster added that the LPA or will bring rains over the western part or western parts of Luzon as it will enhance the southwest monsoon before it leaves the Philippines and heads for Vietnam. The low pressure area was estimated at 270 kilometers east of Casiguran Aurora and embedded along the monsoon trough affecting Luzon. Meanwhile, Kitlong said they are monitoring a cyclone approach approaching from the Pacific Ocean, but predicted it would barely enter the Philippine area of responsibility. The government troops have managed to contain the movement of the Moro National Liberation Front forces in five barangays in Zamboanga City. Alvin Baltazar reports. According to DILG Secretary Maroas, this is where police and military forces are focusing so as to prevent the spread of the tension to other nearby barangays. At present, according to the DILG chief, MNLF forces are contained in the barangays of Santa Catalina, Santa Barbara, Talon Talon, and Mariki. Roas stressed that the continuing standoff is not happening in the entire Zamboanga city. That is why they are still optimistic that uh, the tension could still be resolved in a peaceful manner. Alvin Baltasar for PBS News. A Taiwanese fisherman who was arrested in early who was arrested earlier this month after his vessel was intercepted off Batanes has been released and returned home. Tsai Po arrived in Pintung County following his release after Taiwan's representatives to the or representative to the Philippines Raymond Wang shouldered a $50,000 fine imposed on him by Philippine immigration authorities. Taiwan's Coast Guard said Philippine immigration authorities went easy on Tsai by slapping on him the administrative fine, but no further charges have been filed. It also said Tsai received humanitarian treatment during his detention and was allowed to go to a hospital to have a foot injury checked. He was even allowed to navigate his raft back to Taiwan from Basco in Batanes. 
The armed forces of the Philippines has admitted that they are having a hard time accounting the exact number of casualties in the Basilan clash yesterday. Again, Alvin Baltazar reports. In fact, AFP spokesperson Lieutenant Colonel Ramon Segala said that they committed a mistake in the information which they gave yesterday before members of media where they stated that there were three soldiers who got killed in Lamitan. Sigala said that based on the army troops deployed there in uh, Lapitan, or Lamitan, there was no casualty soldiers who got killed in yesterday's encounter. Alvin Baltazar for PBS News. Pagasa said Metropolitan Manila and the rest of Luzon will have cloudy skies with light to moderate rain showers and thunderstorms. The Cagayan Valley is experiencing cloudy skies with moderate to occasionally heavy rains and thunderstorms which may trigger flash floods and landslides. The Visayas and Mindanao will have partly cloudy to cloudy skies with isolated rain showers or thunderstorms. Light to moderate winds from the west to southwest will prevail over Palawan, Visayas and Mindanao and coming from the northeast to northwest over the rest of Luzon. The coastal waters throughout the archipelago will be slight to moderate. The armed forces of the Philippines says the Lamitan City Basilan clash yesterday possibly was a diversionary tactic by the breakaway group of the Moro National Liberation Front. More from Alvin Baltazar. AFP Public Affairs Office Chief Lieutenant Colonel Ramon Segala said that the MNLF forces just wanted to divert the authorities' attention from the Sambanga City chaos through staging attacks yesterday in Basilan. In the wake of this, Segala assures that they have sufficient manpower in Basilan and protect the residents. The armed forces also guarantees that if ever simultaneous skirmishes happen in Sambanga City and Basilan, the AFP will never run out of military forces to go against the MNLF. Abu Sayyaf and the Bangsamoro Islamic Freedom Fighters. Alvin Baltasar for PBS News. President Benigno Aquino III is in Zamboanga City to personally assess the situation and look into the needs of civilians. The chief executive is meeting with the Zamboanga Crisis Management Committee and other officials on the ground. Malacanang wants to resolve the situation at the soonest possible time as many civilians are already affected. Presidential Communications Development and Strategic Planning Office Secretary Rick Ramon Carandang said the President decided to go to Sambuanga last night after a discussion with officials on the ground. Malacanang had earlier said that the government will not hesitate to use its forces if the rebels continue to pursue the path of violence. The Department of Energy says the power situation in Mindanao would improve after the State Power Incorporated, or SPI, went back online after shutting down on July 29 for scheduled maintenance works. SPI generates at least 20% of the power supply in the Mindanao region. Albert Sebastian reports. The DOE said the unit was officially synchronized to the Mindanao grid last uh, week ahead of schedule. SPI's Unit 2, which has a net capacity of 105 megawatts, went offline last July for a maintenance uh, shutdown. The power plant is located at the uh, Fibidec Industrial Estate in Villa Nueva Misamis Oriental and has two identical electric uh, power generating units with the combined net generating capacity of 210 megawatts. SPI plant manager Karsten Ever said the power plant is considered as Mindanao's most modern, utilizing uh, the state-of-the-art technologies that enabled it to sustain through the years a highly efficient, reliable, and responsible power plant operation. This is Albert Sebastian reporting PBS News. A Catholic priest held hostage by the Moro National Liberation Front, or MNLF, in Zamboanga City has been released. Catholic priest Michael Ufana was released as the crisis in Zamboanga City entered its fifth day today. No other details were immediately available about Ufana's release. The Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines, or CBCP, earlier said that Ufana was with his parents who were celebrating their wedding anniversary when the MNLF took them in Barangay Santa Catalina. The CBCP said Ufana was trapped in the standoff. 
Hundreds of boat passengers stranded for days in Zamboanga City due to sporadic skirmishes between the government and rebel forces have been ferried finally to Basilan in southern Philippines. Isabela City Vice Mayor Abdul Paki Ajibon used his boat to ferry more than 500 people in Zamboanga, bringing them to Isabela City. The passengers, mostly students and employees, were stranded in the port of Zamboanga after authorities suspended all sea and air travels in the city as a safety precaution to civilians. It was not immediately known why the Navy or Coast Guard had not provided vessels to ferry the passengers. Flash floods and landslides could sweep into parts of Bicol, eastern Visayas and the Aurora Quezon area as a potential cyclone hovered near the province of Catanduanes. Pagasa said the low-pressure area was estimated at 270 kilometers east of Iraq in Catanduanes and, and was embedded along the monsoon trough. These weather systems will bring moderate to occasionally heavy rains and thunderstorms over the Bicol region, eastern Visayas, and the provinces of Aurora and Quezon, which may trigger flash floods and landslides. It advised residents to take all the necessary precaution measures. Zamboanga City Mayor Beng Salazar has denied reports that there were 70 to 80 armed members of the Moro National Liberation Front, or MNLF, that surrendered in Barangay Santa Barbara, Zamboanga City. Salazar said there were no official reports about the alleged surrender. Salazar said what she is aware of is that there is a localized ceasefire declared today to give way to a dialogue with the armed groups. She also reiterated that a forced evacuation has been imposed in the affected areas. The United Nations is ready to support the Aquino administration's efforts to provide humanitarian assistance to civilians affected by the armed clashes in Zamboanga City. The United Nations is calling on both the Philippine government and the rebels to respect and protect the rights of the civilian populations. Luisa Carvalho, United Nations resident and humanitarian coordinator in the Philippines, said special attention should be given to women and children. The United Nations call or the United Nations calls for the safe passage of civilians caught in the crossfire. The Philippine Coast Guard suspended search efforts for more than 20 people still missing in the wake of a collision between a passenger ship and a cargo vessel in Cebu last month. The Coast Guard's public affairs office said the Coast Guard has shifted now to the investigation of the Special Board of Marine Inquiry. The Coast Guard said the death toll stood at 115 with 733 rescued and 22 still missing. Meanwhile, more public utility jeeps and tricycles started coming out to ply their routes today in Zamboanga. Residents in the unaffected areas of Zamboanga City tried to get their lives back to normal. Some shops also opened for business, but still accommodated only five to ten people at a time. In news abroad, Republicans in the United States House of Representatives have bought themselves more time to try to avert a government shutdown at the end of September, canceling a week-long recess that was due to begin on September 23. House of Representatives Majority Leader Eric Cantor announced that the break had been scrapped after conservatives in the party rejected his plan to temporarily fund the government in the new fiscal year and stage a vote to defund the Obamacare health reforms. Without new spending authority, the most United States government agencies would have to close their doors on October 1 in a replay of politically painful shutdowns during the mid-1990s. The decision came as Republican conservatives demanding a harder line introduced their own alternative plan, a one-year delay in implementing President Barack Obama's signature health care law coupled with a year-long government funding measure. Democrats said this spending level is unacceptable and are pushing for a higher level that replaces the cuts partly with tax hikes on the wealthy. 
And with that, we conclude the 12 o'clock edition of the Network News. This is Bon Vibar reporting. This is Business Radio. The time is 12.15.